Hey everybody, this is Scott from What You Seek, and today we are looking at the new for 2017, the Bell & Ross BRO3 Horograph. Now, Bell & Ross is a company that's been around since uh, 1992, and this uh, watch is part of their instruments collection. So they have a variety of different collections with different shapes, more traditional shapes. Now, the, the instruments, uh, the square shape design, was first introduced in 2005 with the BR01. Now, the BR01 is a bigger uh, square shape. It's 46 millimeters, where this is the BR03, which is a 42 millimeters. So there's a variety of different designs uh, in the instrument collection. Uh, really runs the gamut, everything from skulls to uh, really different radar looking type things to um, uh, very, uh, what I would call military themes. And, and I'd say an overall theme of the whole instrument collection is going to be the aviation theme. This guy is is interesting because it's it's still using the square shape here, but a lot, well, there really isn't much of like what I would call a military influence in this design. And Bell and Ross say that the design of this was influenced by the um, airport clocks and uh, railway clocks, that type of thing. So a very legible design. And I like it. I, I think of when I look at this, I for some reason, I think of like the 1970s. Maybe it's the those chunky uh, hands in there and just that that rectangle shape to it brings back a, a 70s vibe or something. But definitely very clean, very easy uh, to to tell the time on this guy, which I think is a hallmark with a a, a lot of Bell and Ross or it's easy to tell the time, or maybe with something like some of their radar type uh, things that it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So you have to look at their website and check out some of their other designs. So let's talk about this guy. So the case here is a 42 millimeter by 42 millimeter. Um, it's a fairly thin watch. It's uh, about 10 millimeters high. And from lug to lug here, we're at 51.5. Very short uh, lugs coming off of the, the square case here. So uh, it's water resistant uh, to 100 meters. And this, I believe, is a new finish for Bell & Ross. It's a stainless steel case, and it has this matte finish that was created by uh, bead blasting. And it, it has a... A wonderful feel. It's it's satiny um, kind of a feel, and it it's not polished, and you know it's not brushed. It's just this this bead blasting. Um, I like it. It it has a a, a nice uh, feel to that. The crystal is a flat. There is no dome. There's nothing going on, and as far as the shape, it's a flat crystal, and it has a anti-reflective um, coating on there, and that is sapphire. So very easy, you know, of course it's flat, so I can blind you guys with hitting the light here, but uh, for the most part, uh, real easy to um, to see the dial there. So the case is kind of unique. It's made up um, mainly on, on three parts. We have this, you know, let me zoom in here. Um, where's my remote? Dun, dun, dun. Let's zoom in, see if we can talk about this in detail. So. You see these um, um, these guys here, the screws. They're really not screws. It's kind of like a, um, a Royal Oak uh, kind of a thing. This is actually a nut. The screw is on the back side of the case here, and um, this goes through the three main parts to the case. So we've got the top part here that includes the bezel. We've got the middle part, and a neat thing about the middle part is the lugs are attached, oops, it's not focusing, come on. Can you focus here? There we go. So the lug is actually part of that middle section of the case, which I think is, is really neat. And then we have the case back here, and then the screws going on the case back. Uh, there is a reveal line right in here on between the, the case back and then the top of the case here. And 
the beveling on this, you know, when you look at it straight on, you can see you've got the a bevel on the side here. You've got a bevel around the bezel, um, and it really breaks up and uh, gives different shapes. So you've got the overall square shape, but if you look here, this bezel here sits ever so slightly proud of this case here. And so you get this, uh, it's gonna be hard to show, um, but you get the shadow underneath this bezel right in here. It, it It's really neat. There's a lot of little details that go into this case. It looks really simple, but extremely well executed uh, case. Um, let's see what else. So that's the, the three main parts of the case. Very short lugs. Now the lugs are interesting in that you don't have a typical spring bar you have um, a hex key here. Now, Bell & Ross ships this, uh, the watches with a hex key, and then there is a, a tube that goes in here that uh, screws in to hold your strap. So the, the strap distance uh, in here is 24 millimeter, and, and realistically, you're gonna use a, uh, a purpose-built um, Bell & Ross strap. Bell & Ross online, you can get uh, different straps as well as from your your uh, your dealer uh, and as well as there's there's companies that sell aftermarket straps I'm, I think I'm getting ahead of myself we still got to finish the case um, so there's the crown you've got the ampersand in there from the Bell and Ross logo it sits out there's a little gap on the crown there and you have this knurled part here so when you're pulling it out real easy to to get your fingernail back there, pull it out, set the time, okay? Um, so that's the case. The case back, we have a solid case back with uh, all the text down there, So, uh, which I like. Let's put the stuff on the back instead of on the dial. Um, so I kind of talked about the, the strap a little bit. Let me zoom out so you can get a better view of it. So it comes with two different straps. This is the, the rubber strap. The rubber strap has the B&R um, branding in there. It's subtle, it's, it's just engraved in there. And then on the strap, there is a kind of a bevel here on the side and then a little step down for the, the holes here. The keeper on this end has uh, it's built in, which is, is a neat design for the rubber strap. So the keeper's not, not gonna move. It's built right into this. The strap goes wide there and keeps that in place. You have a uh, signed buckle on the back here, and that is the same finish as the, the case. The other one that it comes with is a black synthetic fabric strap. Um, I believe it's, I haven't seen it, uh, but from pictures it looks like it's a, like a Kodura uh, nylon type of a strap. And like I said, uh, Bell & Ross makes leather, all different uh, uh, colors of leather, leather and stitching, and there's quite a bit of aftermarket straps that will fit this uh, unique shape for the BRO2. So the dial, let's uh, talk about the dial. You know, I'm going to try something different here. I'm just going to put this down and see if we can zoom in on the dial and uh, kind of get a better view on there. Okay, so um, like I said, it's designed for clean legibility, airport clocks, that type of thing. The, the material here is a black mat and there is a texture to it, so um, it is not totally smooth, um, kind of like, uh, I don't know, like an eggshell kind of a thing, but there's just a little bit of a texture. So we've got the the white um, printed markers here. Um, we have larger markers for the hours, and uh, that is Superluminova filled. And then we have the Arabic numbers here for the minutes going around there. And that's those are pretty small. You almost don't even notice it on wrist. Um, but just something to kind of break up the dial. I like the two triangles at 12. And uh, the hands, really chunky kind of baton hands here. It gives it a really neat feel. And one thing I see with Bell and Ross, and I think this kind of goes back to the military uh, type of a, of a thing, but if you notice the center of the hands here are, is black, 
and it really gives a purposeful feel to where the hands are in kind of floating on the dial. Um, and then the seconds hand, you have a very thin seconds hand, uh, black with the orange tip there. So text, minimal text, we've got Bell and Ross, BRO3 Horograph, and then the 100 meters in red. You do have a date window at 430, which I am not a 430 date fan. And you, I think one of the reasons I don't like it at 430 is that, um, you know, on some watches, the date, it, it's skewed, you know, it's, it's pointing this way, but this is vertical. And so I, I really don't mind it. It's, it's kind of um, subtle there. It's not real big. It's a circular opening there. And uh, they kept the, uh, the date uh, printed in white with a uh, black background on the, the date disc. So there's a little bezel onto the date. So uh, very clean dial. I, I really like the dial. And you know, so I was talking about text and that, and that kind of stuff. In my mind, that's where you put all your text, right? So, you know, on the back, it says, you know, stainless steel, automatic movement, water resistance, Swiss made, you know, it's uh, aviation type, all this kind of stuff. Put it all back there. Now, I know if you have an exhibition back, then, of course, that's going to be a little difficult. Um, but I think putting it back here versus what's on the dial uh, makes a lot of sense for this guy. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the movement in here. So this is a mechanical automatic movement. It is the BR Caliber 302, which is basically, it's a Salita SW300, which the SW300 is a clone of the ETA 2892. And what does that mean? That means that uh, there is a workhorse movement uh, in this guy. So it is reliable. It has a 42 hour power reserve. You can get this serviced uh, just about anywhere. The, um, the SW300, it is a thin movement. So it really helps keep this, um, the design of these watches uh, very thin. So um, it's just a, a nice movement. You're not going to have to really worry about uh, uh, much with this guy and serviceability very easy Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to wear this thing now I will say uh, I first wore a watch in the BRO 3 series um, uh, Probably last year early last year for the first time when I photographed a, a different watch in this in this series and when I, you know, I knew it was coming in and I opened up the box, I thought, oh man, this is, this is going to be tough to wear or whatever. And then I wore it for, you know, a couple hours. I remember telling my wife how, how comfortable it was. I was really, really surprised uh, when I first wore a, a BRO3, how comfortable it is. And I, I think there's a, there's a couple things um, that, that make it so. One is the height of it, right? It, it's not a very high... Um, watch and so the the weight of it gets distributed across this 42 millimeter um, watch here and it lays nice and flat on top of your wrist the other thing is these lugs are incredibly short so it uh, this the, the strap here really just sits on your wrist and holds it in place so yeah you know I mean it has a, a obviously a big wrist presence, right? I mean, people will notice this over some, some other traditional round watches uh, right away, but I don't think that it's um, too big on me or in any way uncomfortable to wear. It, it is very comfortable, and I'd love to try um, a um, leather strap with this guy. I think a leather strap uh, would really um, kind of, you know, break in and, and, and hold it in place, maybe even a little better. But uh, right now, uh, it's August, it's Texas, it's extremely hot, so I do appreciate this uh, rubber strap. So I guess, uh, what's my takeaway with uh, this Bell & Ross um, BRO3 Horograph? Well, let me get some of the, my little nitpicks uh, out of the way uh, first, and then we'll, we'll talk about some of the other things. Um, I kind of wish that um, 
they would ship this, Bell & Ross would ship this with a leather strap. I think having a leather strap as, as well as the uh, rubber strap would be great. I think that would be a, a fun way to change it up. And, and I think with the, the uh, hex key here, changing a strap uh, would be super easy. You know, you can always pick up different straps and, and throw that on. The other thing is that these little lines, which I was talking about, the, the K shape here, they tend to pick up little bits of dust and dirt and that kind of stuff. It's no big deal. It's 100 meter water resistant. You turn the faucet on and some nice warm water and rub it off and that just cleans right up. So uh, no big deal there. The, the same thing with the, the little reveal line underneath here. I noticed sometimes that it would get, uh, you know, life. You know, you're wearing it, you get some fuzz from your cuff and shirt, that kind of stuff. No big deal. Um, some things that I really like, that the execution and the design of the case is killer, right? With the, the bezels and just this overall case design. Um, you know, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but this, this case design is really taken from what is in um, an instrument panel in military type airplanes. So they have, you know, your gauge would be in the middle and then you would have screws to hold that gauge unit into the, the, um, the cockpit dash there. So, you know, if you needed to change it out or maintenance, you unscrew some screws and you can pull out the, that instrument. So that's really the design of this. And who would have thought to you know, put that on your wrist, but it really works. And I, I think that it has become an, uh, an iconic, uh, design for Bell and Ross, you know, since, uh, they first introduced it, you know, over 10 years ago. Um, I think it's a lot of fun to wear. It's something different than, uh, anything that I have in my collection. I love the clean design. If, you know, you've watched my videos, you know, that, uh, uh, I like a design like this, you know, I'll, I'll show this to my wife and she goes, yep, that's, that's your kind of watch. Um, and I like the, the flat crystal with the AR coating. Um, I just had a, another watch in, which I love, and it had, uh, uh, kind of a dome crystal, no big deal. just a little different feel. I think the flat crystal gives more of a, uh, I don't know, just a military instrument, uh, type of a thing. I know some of the Zin watches are very flat and that type of thing. Cool feel. So overall, I really enjoy the watch. So once again, this is the Bell & Ross BR-03 Horograph, and this guy comes in at 2,990 US dollars. So if you liked the video, uh, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe, and uh, please keep those comments coming in. So thanks for watching.